What's up, everyone? Today, I have a simple pattern for you. It's an excellent chop builder, and it's super flexible. Lots of ways to map it around the drums. It is eight strokes long, and it's played like right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Played as 16th notes on just the snare drum. The pattern sounds like this. I typically accent each of those right hand strokes and then I play all the left hand strokes as ghost notes, but sometimes I like to accent the single left hand stroke as well. So the whole pattern consists of eight strokes, but it's made up of smaller pieces. It's made up of two groups of three and a group of two, where the groupings of three are right, left, left, and the grouping of two is just right, left. The phrasing works out to one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. So moving forward, we're going to refer to this as pattern A. And pattern A has a couple of siblings, which we'll call pattern B and pattern C. And we can derive these other patterns by changing the order of the small pieces that make up the whole. Pattern B consists of the same small pieces, just in a different order. So instead of the phrase being three, three, and two, pattern B is going to be phrased as two, three, and three. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. Even though it's the same small pieces, when we change the order, the accents land in different positions. So they feel pretty distinct from one another, even though they're all made out of the same stuff. Pattern B, played as 16th notes on just the snare drum, sounds like this. And then pattern C is the other way of ordering these three small pieces. So instead of two, three, and three, or three, three, and two, pattern C is three, two, and three. So the two-stroke grouping is in the middle. I really like this one since the second and third accents with the right hand land on 16th upbeat positions. Feels like it's got a bit more of a unique shape compared to the other two. Pattern C works out too. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left. And played on just the snare drum, it sounds like this. Now, when we accent that single left-hand stroke in pattern C, it makes everything feel a lot more resolute since we end up accenting both of the downbeats in the pattern. But depending on how we orchestrate this pattern or arrange it around the drums, we can sort of lessen that effect to some degree. Speaking of orchestrating these patterns, let's go back to pattern A and figure out some ways to work that around the drums. So we'll start by keeping the left hand on just the snare drum, and we'll move the right hand around in predictable directions. To start, I'll move my right hand in a clockwise order around the drum. So it'll start with an accent in the snare drum, then I'll play the second accent on the small tom, and then the third accent on the floor tom. Could also go counterclockwise, so start with the first accent on the floor tom, second accent on the small tom again, and then the last accent on the snare drum.
And that approach works as well with patterns B and C. Start by just moving the right hand clockwise around the drums and then counterclockwise. And then you could also switch directions in the middle of playing. So in the first pass through, play in a clockwise order. And then on the second repetition, just go counterclockwise. You could kind of go down and back. When you're comfortable with these basic orchestrations, take the reins. Go explore, put your left hand onto different sounds, move your right hand in scrambled directions. Or another cool thing you could do is use the bass drum in place of any of those right hand strokes. I'll have some of these other orchestrations written out on the accompanying transcription, but there are far too many possible ways of arranging these patterns around the drums for me to cover all of them.
When you're really comfortable with each of these patterns individually, you can begin stringing them together to create more interesting phrases. So you could take pattern A and pattern B to fill one measure of 16th notes, or pattern C and pattern A, or you could begin thinking in larger phrases. Maybe you have two measures of 16th notes or a measure of 32nd notes. You could play pattern A twice, and then pattern B, and then pattern C, and that's going to have some nice shape to it, since the accents are all spaced out in various positions. That's the gist of it. I highly encourage you to explore your own orchestrations and your own ways of using these patterns around the drums. That's how you'll better absorb the vocabulary and integrate it into your playing. If you like what you saw in this video, check out my Patreon page. Your support grants you access to transcriptions for this video, as well as transcriptions for all my other lesson videos, and follow me on Instagram, at drummerhar, to see more videos of my playing. As always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.